What's up, Monster Rica? Welcome to Kirkwood TV. Right about now, you're live on air, yeah? Yeah? Yes, I. Love yourself, Kirkwood. Yes, I. Yes, I. Big up, blessings. What's going on, Monster Rica? How you doing, man? Well, as you call, I was in the studio coming up with a happy day song, you know? I'm here working, putting in the work. Sounds good, good. sounds good. Share. Share a little bit of the projects with us. What you working on? Well, it's several projects, you know. At this point, I was sitting trying to build a beat, you know. I'm putting my works because, you know, I'm trying to be experimental. I just don't go along with what's out there. I try to create my own thing. You know, I'm always trying to be creative, trying to create something new. So, a while ago, a melody just hit me, you know. I'm thinking more about one of my singers will sing this song, you know, with somebody with a very good singing voice. So, I have two, I have two people in mind, you know. So, I'm just, you know, trying to just do a happy day song. Happy days has come and gone. You know, this is heaven, feel like heaven's to me. So something, I'm just coming up with a melody, trying to play around. And you know, I've just released my new song also to, um, the new song I've just released is uh, Run The Bumper. So you know that project is going on, I'm doing the marketing, we're ready for the video right now. So I'm right now, I'm trying to wait a, a few people come and do the video. And it's COVID-19, so things are a little different, a little stricter. So I'm trying to set up the environment, we can do the video and everybody be safe. So a lot of projects, a lot of projects, sir. Yes, yes. So, for the people them that don't know who Master Rekka is, please explain where Master Rekka originated from. Well, Master Rekka is um, originally a Jamaican artist and also, you know, my base is in New York slash Florida because I migrated from Jamaica about 95 to our 96 to came to the United States. So from there I start infuse reggae with hip hop, R&B. So my style is a little crossed over, a little bit of shaggy shanpa, you can get some roughness to like a little bit of, um, I would say no, more hardcore too. So it's a, a, a fusion of reggae, hip hop, R&B, rock, you know, I just try to be experimental at all times. So, um, for them who don't know Master Rekka, Master Rekka is still Jamaican at art, still Jamaican, but I do my thing on the international level, write a couple novels too under the name RJ Green. So, you know, I've been doing books, I've been writing, I'm a scientist by, you know, by day job. So, you know, I do a lot of things and you know? I'm one of them who I call a renaissance man in the music industry. And, and along the way, I was, I was trying to help other artists, other people to develop, you know, free of art, because I'm always building sharing knowledge while educating myself along the way. Okay. So that's more or less Master Rekka. Okay, so education ground. How how does that look? Your schoolings and all of that. Um, where did you attend? Well, not to brag in a correct correct. If not, don't talk about it much, but I'm literally probably the most educated artist in the industry. And I'm going to tell people why. First of all, when I was in Jamaica, I started with um, Fernwood High School, transferred to Kingston College. And there, from there, I transferred to Evander High School in the United States. So that's three high school, and then I attended Owensbury College, that's in New York, Long Island. And from there, I moved on to Stony Brook. You know, I got a degree in chemistry at Owensbury College, a bachelor degree of science. And from there, I moved on to Stony Brook, started a master's in theater, never finished. So I went on to Florida, which I attended Florida Atlantic um, College a couple years later, FAU. And I got my master degree in business, international business. So I got a science degree and I also have an MBA degree, which is in business. So a lot of schooling for me. I've been doing school and I love school. My family, I'm from a family of school, schooling. People who love to school. A lot of scholars. So I have a brother, they have a couple of MBAs. My sister, them MBAs, father, PhD. You know? So we are like a family that loves school. So we always try to educate ourselves at the highest level. Otherwise, from music, do you have any other work that you do? Yeah, um, so, alright, so I have a music, I run a publishing company and have a record label, but in, in reality, I'm working in the lab as a scientist slash chemist now, so I'm in the pharmaceutical industry, so I've been through areas where I design, I develop um, just along the way. At this point, I'm currently testing, I'm not in development now, but I'm currently testing, but in the past, I've been into developing drugs or find method to test for prescription. So my job is to make sure the people on the market are safe. So whenever we test the drugs, the FDA, you know, we actually kind of stay working for the FDA. So whenever we test or whatever result we give, that's what determines if it goes on the market, if they have a recall. So my job is very important to make sure we keep the people them safe. You said you write books. Explain something about your books. 
Well, um, the first book I wrote was Tanya and the Snapper, the Jamaican girl. That was the number six bestseller on Amazon in 2011. That book is was when Harry Potter was number one. Tanya Anderson was number six. So it's T A N N Y Anderson. It's called Barefoot Prickles and Torn. And most of my book you can find them at rjgreen.net. It's easier to go to rjgreen.net and you'll find a lot of writings. I wrote Tanya Anderson followed by Searching for the Enemies. And um, I wrote a vampire book also called Grey and Honey. And the last book I wrote was Unpretentious. Unpretentious is like, as a little stronger than Fifty Shades of Grey, different storylines, but it's more along that line, romance, fantasy. So I write a different, I write in all different genre. Every book I wrote is in a different genre because I'm trying to be, I'm a, as I say, I'm a person, I get bored easily. So I try to be creative up all the time, keep my mind excited. So I have to, you know, write different things, sing different music. That's the way I am, you no? Know? I'm always doing different things. People, are, you know, wonder why you don't stick to one thing. But I'm not that guy who's going to stick to one thing. I love to be creative. So I'm a creative person, so I write different genre of book, just like I sing different genre of music. Cool, cool. In the music, you come to a spot in the music that you said, yes, right now, I, I made this, I was a part of this project and I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, music for me go way back when, when I was in college, you know, from high school on to college, when I actually helped a couple of guys, a couple of us started a radio station in the college and we helped to retrofit the radio station. And at the time I was also a DJ to a radio station. So, you know, I used to make my little money by being an engineer in, you know, engineer, set up the sound system, set up music stage, plus I'm performing. So, you know, music, it's been a while. Um, as for me, the gratification I get from music is helping other people, to be honest with you. I enjoy producing other people. I enjoy doing videos, you know, and that's where the main theme of my company is. But for myself, I travel the world and perform here and there, but I get offered, and you know, due to my situation i'm not in a situation like all other musicians I'm, a, I'm in a unique situation whereas i'm not really hungry to be honest with you and because of that i'm driven i pick and choose where i go and sing where i perform which radio station i show fun so my situation is a little different than most regular you know musician situation who are going through the struggles every day i've been through the struggles but as i say i educate myself and lift myself out of the gutter out of the struggles and kind of you know elevate so with that knowledge you now i'm passing on to other people who are willing to learn who are willing to accept some of their feedback or constructive criticism so my situation of music is a little different than most other artists who depend on music only because i'm an entrepreneur so entrepreneur i'm no established business i stop business online i stop up online store called more bag online before there was amazon make my money get out of that and you know invest in the stock market in the bonds you know i'm always into business and I'm saying opportunity so and this, my ultimate goal is to produce movies so this what you're talking about right now self-made it's all self-made you built everything yourself yeah yeah basically you know I remember when I started people were laughing but they, they no longer laugh now they say every time I'm doing something down I'm getting more constructive criticism like yo we gotta be better than the next so people are always looking for me to get better and better and better and better so it's self-made discipline with the belief that product that Creativity is number one, uh, um, quality is number two, and talent is number three. So by knowing the formula in the business degree setting, I can apply it to it in the music world that everything you do, even from Sony Record to Virgin, all these records company, there's a formula and there's a formula to, formula to the madness. So by knowing what you need to focus on, as I said before, the arts need to focus on their creativity is number one. They focus on the quality and them talent. You know, cause a lot of arts have a lot of talent, but they don't come up with the creativity and the quality and that's what hindered their career. So a person could have the creativity and the quality and override the arts with talent. So if you have all three, awesome. But if you have if you're gonna pick three of the two of those three, you pick creativity and quality first. So knowing that formula, I'm always pushing, pushing to be more and more creative. So you highly believe in this visual world. Um so you created all your music videos, all your visual, you create them yourself? Graphics, everything, yeah. But as I say, it's porn, um, it's not only, I, I do get some help along the way. Where what, what I cannot do myself, I outsource. But as long as, but I am always so, I've input on everything. So I will start the graphics, for example. I'll start the graphics of my CD cover, set it to someone to color. And once I'm comfortable coloring, I start with my own graphics myself now. 
I will stop the video. I will get help here and there in terms of footage, but I sit and color and put these things together myself. A lot of people don't have the vision and say, oh, my director, your stuff looks like a movie, but they don't get that concept at first because what they say, oh, the girl should be dancing, why not? I'm saying every video have that. Why should I do the same thing where everybody's doing? So I'm kind of step out of the box and create my own space. And now people are looking to it and say, oh, you know, you're totally right, you know. I like that. But initially, it's a hard task because when you try to be creative at front, you're not going to get the people you're looking for. Most of the time, you're going to go through a struggle. But once it becomes norm, then they're going to follow you, you know. So you just have to keep pushing, keep working. Don't stop. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Master Record. He write books and all of that. You hear everything what you have to say. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like.